So we're going to talk about two things now. Uh, well, actually, three things. The first thing is, if you have a graph of a relation, how can you tell if it's a function? That's fun. The second one is, if you have some equations or rules, how do you tell if those rules represent functions? And down here is kind of as a recap of the stuff we've done so far that has to do with functions. So first of all, we've got the, what's called the vertical line test. It says a relation is a function if any vertical line intersects the graph at most once. Here we have four different relations, which, which, which are functions. So we want to draw vertical lines which intersect the graph and make sure they only intersect it at most once. So we just go to each point here, start going vertically through it like that. And I see here I hit the graph two times. If you hit it two times, it's not a function. If you never hit it two times, it is a function. So here, once, 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 is a function. And it could be a more complicated relation where you don't just have a few dots. You've got all, a whole bunch of dots here. You can do the same kind of thinking. Just look at vertical lines. Make sure they only hit the graph, intersect the graph in most once. So it is a function. If there's just one place where a vertical line intersects the graph more than once, the graph isn't the graph of a function. This one has lots of problems. Here, you can vertical line intersects the graph three times. Not a function. Okay. And then we come over here to this, uh, these two equations. And we're wondering, how can you tell, for an equation, how can you tell if the equation describes a function or not? So we need to know, for each x, Is there only one y? So the x has to be in the relation. So here, for, for have, to have a relation with an x in it, you have to be able to take the square root of x uh, plus 1. So for x bigger than or equal to minus 1, which makes x plus 1 at least 0, so you can take the square root. Y is just one number. Uh, so this is a function. Nice. We can ask ourselves the same question over here. 4x squared plus y squared is 1. For each x, is there only one y? And all we need to do is find some counterexamples if we think it's not true. So I'm thinking I'll try this. x is 0, y is 1, solves that equation. But x is 0, y equals minus 1. Both are in the relation. So there's two elements of the relation. Uh, they have the same x value and different y values. And that's just not allowed if it's a function. So showing something's not a function, it's just a matter of finding sim the same x values associated with different y values. Showing something is a function, you have to show for each, each x, there's only one y. So you'd have to run through all possible x's. If it looks like for every possible x, there's only one y, like here, because y is just a formula based on x, then for each x, there's exactly one y. It's this number, square root of x plus 1. Over here, for all the x's and y's you might have, there's plenty of x's in the domain for this where there's two y's because it's y, 4x squared plus something squared is 1 plus or minus that something squared is also going to be the same number squared. And so x, x y and x minus y will both be in the relation. Here's an example of 0, 1, 0, minus 1. So you can tell there's many instances in that second case where it's, it's not a function. Finally, down here you've got three ways you might think about functions. Okay. Uh, if you are fascinated with the concept of relations, a function is a special kind of relation. So it's a kind of relation where the first 
coordinates not repeated in the list of ordered pairs. On the other hand, you wouldn't need to mention the notion of relation at all. You could just talk about ordered pairs. A function is a special kind of set of ordered pairs. Ordered pairs, set of ordered pairs is just a relation. Don't have to tell you that. A special kind of set of ordered pairs where the first coordinate's not repeated. And third, we can think of a function as a rule assigning to assigning one range value to each domain value. That's to say, each domain value only gets assigned to one number. They don't get all assigned to the same number, but each domain value is assigned to one range value, not two different range values. So how could you set up a situation where it looks like a rule would assign two values, say, in the range to one in the domain? And a good example of that is uh, if the rule, put it up here because I just thought of it. If the rule was, I'm thinking now, maybe I'm messing up here. I'm thinking this, I'm thinking that y equals plus or minus the square root of x is the thing I'm trying to make. So for the same x, I get two different y's, plus or minus the square root. So that, that clearly is crazy. So we'll write it like this, y squared is x. So if that was your relation, y squared is x, something like's going on here, then you could see that x is one, y is minus one, x is one, y is one, both work. Oh, it's, it's, sort of, it's sort of like a square root though, right? y squared is x, so if x is four, y is 2, if x is 4, y is minus 2. So there would be a situation where you could pretty easily uh, create a rule which assigns two y values to each x value. And it's the common notion of square root, where you've got plus or minus the square root. And that, all kinds of cause, that causes all kinds of trouble that there's two square roots, plus and minus something, for a given positive number. And it's because this, that square root notion it's based on something that's not a function. It causes us all kinds of trouble. We have to talk about principal square roots, all kinds of things to try to figure out how I identify just one square root of x when x is a positive number, when in fact there's two things that square to be x plus or minus something. So that's not just a silly thing. It's something that comes up. Well, that gets to the end of section 2.5. It's got some stuff in it. Um, this concept of a function is sophisticated and will continue to follow us throughout the course. And I can't wait to see what comes next. I'll see you there, and I'll see you later.